What's the secret to winning in the stock market? Studies clearly prove it is not market timing. That's a way to get burned. Smart investors know that dividend investing, especially in companies that grow their dividends every year, has one of the best track records in market history. Just ask Warren Buffett. The Black Diamond Dividend Strategy through IQ Wealth Management in Scottsdale is the logical and prudent way to invest for strong compounding growth over time with less hassle. If you live in Chandler and are looking for a more dynamic and prudent approach to investments, learn more about the Black Diamond. Let's listen in on leading financial advisor Steve Jurich of IQ Wealth Management talk about the power of dividends in a recent broadcast of the popular daily radio show, Mastering Money on Money Radio. At any point throughout, you can visit our website by clicking the little circle with the eye in the top right corner. Here's retirement strategist and Kiplinger contributor, Steve Jurich. When selecting dividend-paying stocks, you want to pay attention to at least five critical factors. These include the dividend yield, total annualized payout, payout ratio, dividend growth percentage, and the consecutive number of years that the stock has increased its dividends. Focusing not just on dividend payers, but consistent dividend growers may lead to higher total returns over time. Then, when dividends are systematically reinvested, you get the benefit of dollar-cost averaging. At IQ Wealth, we consider all of these factors and we require a minimum 3% dividend yield or more at each quarterly rebalancing, using the yield as a value determinant. We believe this approach helps our clients grow wealth over time. For more, visit BlackDiamondDividend.com. That's BlackDiamondDividend.com. Advisory services by IQ Wealth Management, a registered investment advisor. Custodian Fidelity Institutional. More income, smarter investments. Welcome back to Mastering Money on Money Radio. Welcome back to Mastering Money on Money Radio, brought to you by IQ Wealth, where financial success is not only possible, but highly attainable. I'm Ken Morgan with retirement strategist and best-selling author Steve Jurich. How are you doing, everybody? It's time now for the IQ Wealth Market Intel segment. Yes, sir. Money for Nothing. Uh huh. It's not only the title of a song by Dire Straits from the 80s, it's also the feeling many investors get when they receive a dividend. Oh, yeah. All you have to do is buy shares in the right company and you'll receive some of its earnings. Now, how exciting is that? <laughs> it's always nice. Despite the advantage, however, there are several implications involved in the paying and receiving of dividends that the casual investor might not be aware of. Mm-hmm. Dividends are one way in which companies share the wealth generated from running the business. They're usually a cash payment, often drawn from earnings paid to the investors of a company, the shareholders. They're paid on an annual or, more commonly, a quarterly basis. The companies that pay them are usually more stable and established and not fast growers. Right. Those still in the rapid growth phase of their life cycles tend to retain all the earnings and reinvest them into their businesses. Many investors like to watch the dividend yield, which is calculated as the annual dividend income per share divided by the current share price. Mm -hmm. The dividend yield measures the amount of income received in proportion to the share price. If a company has a low dividend yield compared to other companies in its sector, it can mean two things. One, share price is high because the market reckons the company has impressive prospects and isn't overly worried about the company's dividend payments. Yep, can be a little overbought. Or two, companies in trouble and cannot afford to pay reasonable dividends. Mm -hmm. At the same time, however, a high dividend yield can signal a sick company with a depressed share price. Yep. Dividend yield is of little importance for growth companies because, as we discussed before, uh, retained earnings will be reinvested in expansion opportunities, giving shareholders profits in the form of capital gains. Think Microsoft, for example. Yeah, you can also hear the term dividend coverage ratio when you evaluate a company's dividend-paying practices. Ask yourself if you think the company can actually afford to keep paying the dividend. The ratio between a company's earnings and net dividend paid to shareholders, known as dividend coverage, remains a well-used tool for measuring whether earnings are sufficient to cover dividend obligations. The ratio is calculated as earnings per share divided by the dividend per share. When coverage is getting thin, odds are good that there will be a dividend cut, which can have a dire impact on valuation. Investors can feel safe 
with a coverage ratio of two or three. In practice, however, the coverage ratio becomes a pressing indicator when coverage slips below about 1.5, at which point prospects start to look risky. If the ratio is under one, the company is using its retained earnings from last year to pay this year's dividend. Not a good thing. At the same time, if the payout gets very high, say above five, investors should ask whether management is withholding excess earnings, not paying enough cash to shareholders. Managers who raise their dividends are telling investors that the course of business over the coming 12 months or more will be stable. While a history of steady or increasing dividends is certainly reassuring, investors need to be wary of companies that rely on borrowings to finance those payments. Mm -hmm. Again, take the utilities industry, which once attracted investors with reliable earnings and fat dividends. Mm -hmm. As some of those companies were diverting cash into expansion opportunities while trying to maintain dividend levels, they had to take on greater debt levels. Right. Watch out for companies with debt-to-equity ratios greater than 60%. Higher debt levels often lead to pressure from Wall Street, as well as debt rating agencies. That, in turn, can hamper a company's ability to pay its dividend. Mm -hmm. One big benefit, uh, dividends bring more discipline and mathematics to management's investment decision-making. Rather than guessing, a systematic approach can be developed based on real money being generated by real companies in the real economy. That's right. Holding on to profits rather than paying dividends by those managers might lead to excessive executive compensation, sloppy management, and unproductive use of assets. Studies show that the more cash a company keeps, the more likely it is that it will end up overpaying for acquisitions and in turn damage shareholder value. In fact, companies that pay dividends tend to be more efficient in their use of capital than similar companies that do not pay dividends. And furthermore, companies that pay dividends are less likely to be cooking the books. <laughs> it's true. Let's face it, managers with PhDs and master's degrees in business can be awfully creative when it comes to making earnings look good. Yeah, just ask, ask Nick Stefaniak. Nick, admit, uh, with the uh, dividend obligations <laughs> to meet twice a year, manipulation becomes that much more challenging. You can't fake cash. Yeah, that's right. Finally, dividends are public promises. Breaking them is both embarrassing uh, to management and damaging to share prices. And uh, to, to, not, yeah, to, to not raise a dividend or, or certainly to suspend a dividend is confession of failure. Executives of the company are charged with the responsibility to raise the company's value. Raising the dividend is a statement that they're getting the job done. Yeah. Dividends are also a way to calculate value. They can give investors a sense of what a company is really worth. The dividend discount model is a classic formula that explains the underlying value of a share. And it's a staple of the capital asset pricing model, which in turn is the basis of corporate finance theory. According to the model, a share is worth the sum of all of its prospective dividend payments discounted back to their net present value. As dividends are a form of cash flow to the investor, they're an important reflection of a company's value. It's important to note that stocks with dividends are less likely to reach unsustainable values. Investors have long known that dividends tend to fall less far during market declines. When the, in 2008, you can just go back and look at a chart. Take a look at the dividend aristocrats those are stocks that have increased their dividends for 25 years or longer. You can see that that index did not fall as far as the uh, broader market, certainly not as far as some of the go-go growth stocks. Also, you saw that uh, as the market started to recover, those dividend-paying and dividend-growing stocks, very important to look for dividend growers, they came back faster. It's called yield support. When uh, you have two stocks that you have and you have to get rid of one, think about two cows. You're going to keep the, the beef cattle. Are you Are going to sell that off or are you going to sell the milk cow? You're probably going to keep the milk cow because that's paying those dividends. Cash flow never goes out of style and investors will always gravitate toward healthy cash flow. It's a good position to be in right in the path of future demand. The bottom line is that dividends matter. Evidence of profitability in the form of a dividend check can keep inv investors sleeping more easily. Less to keep track of also. All these stocks that are going up and down and earnings coming out. Watch those dividends a lot easier. Reinvesting ever in ever-rising dividends with quality companies is one strategy with a provable, tangible, and measurable track record for over 100 years. 
To learn more about the Black Diamond Dividend Strategy or to hear the rest of the show, click the link right now and see the IQ Wealth Management website. Learn more right now about why dividends have one of the best track records in market history. Click the link now to retire and stay retired.